I had a 17 year old little brother and uh, one day he took off. And when he came back, uh, he was telling me, you know, that some guy had murdered uh, three guys. And so a couple of days later, the, you know, we wake up to banging on the door and uh, you had all kinds of cops here. The narcos was here and they just raided my house. You know, they were looking for the guns. They were looking for everything and everything and anything that they could find. Hi, my name is Maribel Coda, and this is my story. So we're here in Almani and, and uh, I don't know, this street, it, uh, it made a big impact in my life. Not good impact, but it was, uh, you know, uh, it was uh, just devastating for me to come, even just to come back. I was stuck here in this dead end street for like 12 years. I couldn't come out. And uh, I started partying here, you know, as probably like 13 years old. By the age of 15, I, I got strung out. And at 15, from 15 to 28, I couldn't get out of the street. Uh, at first it was all fun and games, you know, partying, coming here, you know, meeting up with the guys. And, and before you knew it, I got strung out. I just couldn't come out. I was uh, in a bondage. I was in a state of bondage here. And um, I got strung out on heroin and, and I was sleeping actually here in, in this street in a car. Uh, just a little bit down the ways, I was uh, washing my hair at Carl's Jr. You know, it's just um, hard, ugly times for me here. You know, I remember one time when, when, uh, cause I used to live also right here at the corner as a little girl and I would look out my window. I lived on the second story and I look, I would look out my window late at night. There would be cars coming in and the guys from the gang, from the barrio, they would stop the people that were coming in and they would make them give them all the money and stuff. And, you know, I would be like, wow. So, and nobody was able to enter into the street. Uh, without getting taxed or, you know, getting ripped off and stuff. And here in this dead end too, you know, there was stabbings, there was, you know, fights and stuff like that. People would come in and it was, uh, it was a dead end. So it was easy, you know, to trap people in here and stuff, but there was stabbings and um, fights and stuff like that. Usually because, you know, of the neighborhood or because of drugs, it was either one or the other. I was usually like just ripping people off for, for, you know, drugs. I remember one time I started selling heroin and, and um, uh, you know, this, this girl ended up burning me and stuff. So uh, we ended up fighting and stuff, but uh, it was always just about like drugs and, you know, uh, burning people or, you know, stealing people's batteries and stuff like that. So it was always mainly pointed to either, you know, what neighborhood you were in or because of the drugs and stuff. So basically this side of town, it, it's, it's, you know, ugly memories for me and stuff. <laughs> you know, I didn't really care about anybody at that time. I just cared about you know, what I was into and, and, um, you know, we would always come here. Once I had moved out of here, I would always come back just to sit here and party, you know, with the guys and stuff, a group of girls, we would come back and party with the guys here and stuff. So, well, I grew up from Flores. Um, I, I have two brothers, two older brothers. They're, they're from Flores. And then, uh, the father of my three kids, he's from Hayes, you know, which were rival gangs at the time. So I'm here, you know, hanging out in, in Monte Hayes and um, my brothers didn't like that too much, you know, especially when they would try to come here and gang bang. I remember there was a party at one time and Monte Hayes was having a party and I was there and then Flores came in and, and they broke up the party and I'm stuck like in between, you know, Monte Flores, which, you know, was my brother's barrio and then you know, Monte Hayes, which was, which was the father of my kids. So I didn't really know what to do, but I ended up taking off with the father of my kids and stuff. So I was like in between gangs and, and stuff like that. So one time I remember me and the father of my kids, we were just, you know, walking. It was probably around six o'clock. And um, 
some guys in a white van they actually opened the van and they dragged him in there and i'm over here trying to help him and stuff but um they they were trying to take him and um uh that wasn't the first time though i just uh, you know he used to sell you know heroin and stuff and so uh they were always trying to you know kidnap him or take him one time we were in a motel him and i and i actually had one of my daughters at the time and uh, we answered the door and there was these two guys they were you know wearing masks they came into the motel room and uh they tied him up and i got my daughter and i just ran out and so there was just different things that had happened you know during the time that i was you know uh, strung out and just hanging out in the neighborhood and stuff but um i i, I tend to just like kind of like block a lot of things because it's just um hard for me to to remember all this stuff i remember one time uh you know sometimes you just get so desperate when you're out there and strung out and you see other girls making fast money and and so one of one time this girl asked me you know if i wanted to pull a trick and i was so naive to it and uh, so i said what's a trick and she said you know uh, where you just sleep with someone and make quick money and you know, and at first I was like, wow, that's kind of gross, you know, but your desperation, out of desperation, you go to that point. And so I remember I did, I, I, I did it and, you know, it just felt so ugly after, but um, the money, you know, it, it was there. And, and so just not being sick, not, you know, I didn't, I did, I didn't want to be sick. And so out of desperation, you, you, you do things. Um, that you never before in your life ever think that you're ever gonna do. So I would hang out here. I actually lived here in a, one of the cars. You know, we would park it in one of the garages down the street and that was our home. Um, I didn't have anywhere to bathe or anywhere to brush my teeth and stuff. So every morning what I would do is just go to Carl's Jr's down the street and uh, as long as my hair is now that's how long my hair was back then probably even longer but i would uh wash my hair at carl's jr with the dish you know the hand soap i would wash my hair in the sink and sometimes it was humiliating you know people would come into carl's jr and to the restroom and want to go in there and use the restroom and i was here washing my hair in the sink and i i know that in my time it was humiliating for me. Definitely, it's it's very rough, you know, because as being a female, you go through your, you know, different changes, and you know, and so it's it's very humiliating. People look down on you. You become like a like a ghost, <laughs> you know. Nobody they see you, but they don't see you, and and they they'll see you and they'll just pass right by you and stuff. So you just become kind of like you know, just somebody walking down the street that nobody really cares about. You know, I found out another way to make drug money, you know, for my drug habit. And so I started selling drugs and they, you know, the guys, they, they found out that I was selling. And so um, one time this guy just came in and he uh, burned me for, um, you know, my, the drugs that I was selling and stuff. So he ended up, you know, hitting me and stuff and he took the drugs away and now here I am having to um, see what I was going to tell the connection where his money was at because I had to give him either the drugs back or the money and and so yeah I, I've been assaulted before um, from guys <laughs> but uh, you do anything that you can to survive out here in the streets. So this house behind me this duplex, I lived here for many years. A lot of things happened here as well. I can remember one time there was this girl. She used to live the second, you know, house down. And uh, one day she just kept provoking me. And I really didn't want to do anything because, you know, I was on heroin. And I knew that if the cops were going to come, I was going to get arrested for an under the influence. And so my sister was like, why are you letting her tell you anything? I'm like, you know what, just leave her alone. So I came out of the house and all of a sudden I said, you know what, forget this. 
So I ended up fighting her. So as I'm fighting with her, all her four sisters come out. My sister comes out. My mom comes out. And so here we are having a, a brawl <laughs> right here in front of this house right here. And so we just ended up, you know, fighting and stuff. And after that, after I left my house, I, I, I would always just carry knives or, you know, a bat or something like that, just in case they would try to come at me again. But there was another incident that happened here that is very close to my heart as well. Uh, I had a 17 year old little brother and uh, one day he took off and when he came back, uh, he was telling me, you know, that some guy had murdered uh, three guys. And so a couple of days later, the, you know, we wake up to banging on the door and uh, you had all kinds of cops here. The narcos was here and they just raided my house. You know, they were looking for the guns. They were looking for everything and everything and anything that they could find and so they just turned our house upside down trying to look for guns or knives anything that had to do with that murder and so that day they ended up taking my brother which was 17 years old and uh, he's still incarcerated at this time which he's 45 years old now so he was also from Flores too but there's just a lot of things that have happened here in this house as well um I remember uh, just standing right here. There actually used to be a palm tree right here. One time I was standing out here smoking a cigarette and then uh, some, some guys, they just ended up shooting this way where one of the bullets ended up in, uh, in the window. So just thank God that God was always protecting us and stuff. So just a lot of things have happened. Every Friday night, if the cops weren't here, it was very rare. Cops were always in and out of this driveway right here. It's a lonely life. Even though you're you're hanging out with people and you feel like you're having fun, but that fun is only for a moment. It doesn't last a lifetime. And when you end up getting, you know, in trouble, everybody seems to just disappear. I ended up getting busted and I gave an alias. And, uh, you know, they wanted to wait until the fingerprints came out. And so I ended up, being released uh, that night. And so two weeks later, I was out here smoking a cigarette and all the cops from El Monte were looking for me because they wanted to know who was the girl that, um, you know, talked the jailer into letting her go before the fingerprints came out. But I still ended up getting busted two weeks later uh, for giving a, you know, for, for the under the influence and stuff. But the other times, you know, it's so humiliating when you end up getting busted. It's, you know, they, they, they just humiliate you and you just become a number. Um, you end up fighting in there as well. I ended up getting, you know, in fights in there and, and it just seemed like no matter where you went, you were always having to defend yourself. You were always having to, you know, either trying to make a name for yourself and, and trying to, let everybody know who you were. You know, there was never peace, never peace. I fought in there, I fought out here, you know. I think that this world makes you become a person that you don't want to become. It hardens your heart and um, you just become this person that only this world, uh, it, it fills you up with rage and and hatred and, you know, you don't trust nobody. And so you just become this person that you never think that you would become. But yeah, the jail, you know, it's just something else, very humiliating. It brings you to a low point in your life. So I had praying parents. My mom and dad would always pray for me. Even though, uh, you know, as growing up, my dad was an alcoholic, he ended up getting saved. The age of 15, my mom and dad started going to Pentecostal church. They were always praying for me. And uh, one day at the age of 28, I got out of jail. I didn't want to use anymore. And something just happened and something clicked in my life where I got tired and I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. Same 
you know, same thing, drugs, alcohol, different people, you know, men, women, relationships. And so I just got tired and I cried out to God and I said, Lord, there's something that you need to do within my life. I don't want to be like this anymore. And I just wanted to become a better daughter to my parents. And I wanted to become a better mother as well to my to my kids that I had left. And I had abandoned my kids with my parents, you know, to be out there in the streets. But God came in and he rearranged my life. He changed the way I thought. He gave me the great exchange. He turned my sorrow into joy. He turned my grief into happiness. And he just changed my mindset, you know, where now I don't live a life trying to hide from people or trying to prove pe to people who I am. Now I, I, I know who I am. I know who my God is. And therefore I walk in the confidence of God. And I know that no matter whatever happens to me now, that all things will work out together for my good because I love the Lord and he is my God. He is my savior. He is my all. So um, I ended up getting my, my kids back. My three older kids, I ended up getting my kids back. I ended up marrying a good man. I've written two books. My husband passed away from cancer, but I still have that peace and that joy in my life um, that only God can give me. And I'm, I'm happy because I know that, you know, the life that God has for me is more than enough. It's more than sufficient. And so if it wasn't for him, I would probably be insane right now. I would probably still be a drug addict. I'd probably still be homeless, but it's because of him that I am sane. Um, and only God was able to do that. What institution couldn't do, what the Correctional Institute couldn't do, what rehab pro programs couldn't do, God did that. And so, you know, my kids are proud of me. You know, they're proud to say that I'm their mother and uh, just want to leave a legacy for them. And I want to help and encourage others from my story, because I know that there's others out there that have gone through what I've gone through. And so if I made it and I pulled through, regardless of what I went through, I know that others can also make it as well.